Okay, so thanks a lot. It's a great pleasure to be here. Many thanks for um, attending this session. So I talk about an ongoing project in South Africa where we um, try to quantify multinational tax avoidance in South Africa and think about the effect of countermeasures uh, against multinational tax avoidance in the South African context. It's very much work in progress, as you will see, and we just share what, what we have up to now. So um, as we heard many times um, in this conference, multinational tax avoidance is very high on policymakers' agendas, and we have seen all these reforms unilaterally, multilaterally, that aim to constrain profit shifting to low tax countries, and developing nations and emerging markets have played a very active role in that process. But looking from an academic perspective, many questions are arguably still unanswered. So in the context of developing countries, how prevalent is multinational profit shifting actually, and how effective are anti-profit shifting regulations? So we have some evidence, and the evidence mainly, especially on the second question, is on the developed world. And there's reason to believe that um, these results may not necessarily be externally valid for less developed countries, um, among others because the tax capacity in these nations is lower. Okay, so what we do here is we uh, levy very rich data um, um, from South Africa, tax administrative data, where we can see the universe of corporate tax returns, can link that to the universe of firm level trade data in a very fine-grained way. So we can see trade in very fine-grained six-digit product categories between South African firms and partner countries, and that allows us to get some notion about um, profit-shifting behavior, and we can distinguish between a multinational and national firms um, to some degree. And the main questions are here in bold on that um, slide is, so we want to quantify profit shifting and mainly we also want to get a notion on how has it changed over time. So we've seen a period of a lot of effort to constrain profit shifting. Did that show any result? Um, is there any evidence that this problem has, has gone down over time? And can we link that to anti-profit shifting regulations that have been uh, implemented? So if you think about how to quantify multinational profit shifting, then um, the whole problem is about low tax reporting of multinationals in a high tax country like South Africa. So South Africa is um, arguably a high tax country, levies a tax rate of 28%. Uh, so um, what you basically want to track is do these multinationals report enough uh, profit in that country? And one approach is just to compare them to national firms that are arguably kind of similar but do not have at their disposal this option to use international tax avoidance. Now, using the strategy is very difficult because if you think about multinational and national entities, they are arguably very different. Dominica has a nice paper that um, makes this point on a theoretical basis. So what the literature does is basically to match on size and industry characteristics. That might not be enough, so you might also match on productivity, on market power. And the problem with these measures is that they are affected by profit shifting, so we do not have clean productivity measures and one medium run and um, aim of that project is actually to come up with productivity measures that are cleaned by profit shifting. So here in the first step, we look at pre-tax profitability of multinational firms relative to some comparison firms that are, are arguably similar and to look at something that we call zero tax reporting. This is something that Niels has written like a couple of years um, ago or established, um, which is the, f uh, the observation that some um, companies actually constantly report very low profits in high tax countries every year, again, zero or very close to zero. And this is very suggestive that they have profit shifting strategies in place where they have fixed costs that they expend at the beginning to set up a scheme and that allows them then to shift like much of their profit out every year. And the question is, do we see that um, in the data? And I show you here um, the distribution of pre-tax profitability of um, two types of firms in South Africa. So in blue, this is multinational firms. So pre-tax profitability range between minus one and one and the zero in the, in the middle. And in red, you see uh, national entities, arguably kind of similar. And you see this big spike on the zero. So um, that is arguably something like zero tax reporting. And you see that it's much more pronounced for the multinational firms. Yeah? 
And this is not any multinational firms, but this is multinational firms in the data that have um, a parent company in a haven country. Yeah? So arguably firms that by their structure are already kind of suggestive in engaging in profit shifting behavior. What is very interesting is if you um, do the same graph for multinational firms that do not have a parent in a tax haven country, and this is actually the, the large majority of firms in South Africa, yeah? so haven parents, uh, it's, it's something like 700 or less depending on the year you look at firms with a haven parent, so this is like the bulk of multinational firms that do not have a parent in a haven country, and here this graph looks arguably quite similar for the national entities and the multinational entities. So I guess what, and others have uh, written about that as well, is what you can take away um, from that is not every multinational firm um, engages in profit shifting, or at least suggestive from this graph, but it's um, a, a smaller number of entities that um, do so, but the smaller number of entities tend to, tends to be large. So it's the largest firms that do that. And so in terms of revenue loss, it may still be substantial in your economy. And we kind of see the same pattern if we look at pre-tax profitability rates. So here in the upper part, we compare multinational firms with a parent in a haven relative to control firms. And you see they are less um, profitable in terms of reported pre-tax profitability by around two percentage points. This is quite um, a bit. And you do not see uh, the same type of pattern if you compare the pre-tax profitability of multinational firms uh, without a haven parent and um, comparable entities. So um, what we then do in the project is look at specific profit shifting um, channels. And what I show you here is um, infrafirm uh, trade mispricing, which is uh, arguably also reflected in the literature. Um, one, one major channel, or it's perceived to be a major channel, where firms um, strategically distort prices for infrafirm trade to shift profit from high tax to low tax countries. And our data is exceptionally well suited to assess these practices because we see these fine grained product categories and can then um, basically ask if the profit shifting incentive changes because the partner country, for example, changes the corporate tax rate. Do we see that the price for this very fine grained product? category, the, the price that the firms um, charge, does it change in a way that is consistent with uh, profit shifting? And the answer is yes, we see that in the data. So this is like a regression output. And what you um, need to look at is this negative coefficient here, which just tells you if the corporate tax rate in the partner country increases, um, and this is import trade, um, then this reduces um, intra-firm import trade prices. And this is consistent with profit shifting adjustments that you see in the firm. Yeah? So if you think about a low tax country, then import trade would be overpriced for profit shifting purposes if the corporate tax rate goes up, the price goes down. This is consistent with less profit shifting incentive. So arguably where we actually want to go with that project is to understand a bit better how did these incentives change um, or have changed over time. Can we say something about the effectiveness of anti-profit shifting regulations? And I think um, the, my general perspective would, would be that we have seen like a decade at least or even longer of activity um, against multinational profit shifting, or at least the topic has been very high on the public agenda, on the policymakers' agenda. There have been many reforms, and kind of the landmark was the 2013 kickoff of the BEPS um, project of the OECD. And so arguably there was some anticipation and actual tightening in profit shifting regulations and there have, has been a lot of investigative journalism with individual firms being exposed by journalists of profit shifting practices. I think there's kind of an awareness, especially in consumer facing multinationals, that this is really a risk um, being exposed or getting negative reports about multinational profit shifting. So I guess you can think about the whole decade or all these years about, you know, something happened in this profit shifting domain and did that show up in general in in the behavior of multinational firms. And then of course, like more specifically, you can ask, did any specific measure add to constraining 
uh, profit shifting. And if you think about the South African context, this could be measures taken by the South African government. And if uh, I think about my sample frame, then there have been two main measures that stand out. This is the introduction of country by country reporting in 2016. And kind of related to that, a tightening of transfer price documentation regulations where multinational firms with very high levels of intra-firm trade were actually required to give like a detailed transfer price documentation. And I can ask, did that have any effect on the behavior um, of companies? And then from a South African perspective, of course, there were all these other countries, I show you a graph in a minute, tightening their rules made this also have had um, an effect. And here you see a suggestive uh, graph that does not look that as nice as I would like uh, it to look. So it starts in 2013 and shows you the development of intra-firm trade prices for goods. So unfortunately, I do not see service trade. So this is only goods trade between um, South Africa and, and uh, between um, uh, tax havens and South Africa. So this is import trade. And the green line is the prices for intra-firm import trade and the blue line is for extra firm import trade from tax havens, so both from tax havens. And this is, everything is conditional on the firm and conditional on the product category. So this is really, this is not compositional effects, but price effects. And what we see is that the intra firm um, trade prices starting in 2013, they tend to decline and we do not see the same type of movement. Um, for the extra firm price, we of course want to extend like in earlier periods to see when this actually started, um, but we, we haven't done that yet. But the data actually is available um, from 20, um, uh, 2009 actually. So, but this is kind of suggestive that there was kind of a uh, ad adjustment, at least if you look at tax haven trade. And this is like typical tax haven countries on the um, Rice and Heinz list or Dhammapala um, and, and Heinz list. Okay, so if we think about what um, happens to trade volumes with tax havens, then we see that the propensity to trade with tax havens also came down in the same period. So here you see aggregate trade volumes at the outset of my period and at the end of the period, and you see like a mild decline of um, trade with tax haven countries. And here you see the number of firms, and this is here in blue, the number of firms in South Africa that have a parent in a tax haven country. And this also came down here in the middle of the sample period, while this is all firms in South Africa. It's scaled differently, yeah? So this is very few firms, and this is uh, several thousands of firms. Um, but you see that the trend is like different in these lines, um, suggesting somehow that like the tax haven presence of these firms at least to some extent declined. And the question is, can we somehow link that to policy actions in the country? And um, as I said, one prominent policy action was in 2016, the introduction of country by country reporting and the tighter transfer pricing provisions for certain firms that have very high levels of intra firm uh, trade. And so what we did in a, in a second um, analysis is that we asked the question, again, this is here, import prices um, for um, haven trade, so imports from haven countries. And we see this would be like the general trend that these prices declined within that uh, time frame. And the question is, do we see any additional effect uh, driven by countries that, companies that, that are actually treated by this intervention? And in terms of the point estimate, this is, looks a bit suggestive, but it's not very precisely estimated, so that would not be statistically uh, different um, uh, from zero in a statistical sense. Um, but here, so um, uh, we can go back to that in the discussion if you're interested, we need to kind of simulate and make assumptions which companies are, tr um, are, are treated by that because we see intra-firm trade only on the import side and not on the export side. And so we somehow need to model who's actually treated and perhaps we do not model that in an adequate way right now and this is where the noise comes from. So then the last question or, or one of the last questions uh, would be did, um, did, did it have any effect that many, many other countries in the same 
um, time period also tightened their anti-profit shifting re regulations. And what you see here is the number of countries with transfer pricing rules being in place. So green would be general transfer pricing rules and red and blue would be transfer price documentation requirements starting in the early 2000s until about today, but there's like a steep increase yeah, across uh, the world. Um, should we expect that this somehow impacts uh, South, South Africa? So in a first step, you may think about transfer pricing regulations. They constrain mispricing behavior um, um, at the firm level, so it might affect intra-firm trade. But if you now think about these reforms happening in other countries and South Africa being a high, relatively high tax nation, you might actually not expect something really happening at the bilateral level, because if it's a higher tax country that tightens its transfer pricing regulation, the profit shifting incentive is actually small, yeah, so may nothing happen uh, for that reason. And if it's a low tax country, the low tax country do, does not have any incentive to enforce that regulation. So you might just expect that something indirect and general may happen, that of course if other countries tighten their rules, that may hamper profit shifting to low tax countries, and if there are some kind of complementarities, it may also constrain profit shifting from South Africa, yeah, for consistency reasons, for example. So it's probably very difficult for a firm to charge on the same product vastly different prices and tax haven trade from one high tax country and the other. Yeah? Um, however, one interesting thought um, is there's this very nice paper, and I, many of you may know that, by Torslov et al., who say, who argue that the, the pricing behavior of firms may in part be driven by tax authority incentives, and what they document for Denmark is that the tax authority in the transfer pricing domain does not go after the tax haven trade, but after the trade between high tax countries, because the tax authority always has an incentive to tilt the price in its favor. And that may give funny incentives to the firm if there's one tax authority with very tight regulation or very tight enforcement and another very lax tax authority and the firm does not want to have hassle or there are hassle costs, then it might tilt the price towards the tax authority with the tighter regulation. And then if these transfer pricing rules change, it may tilt the prices in favor of the, of the tightening jurisdiction. And the question is, do we see that in the data? And the answer is no. Yeah, so here we basically look at South African uh, partner countries tightening their transfer pricing regulation, e either introducing legislation or documentation requirements. And the question is, so if this is import trade again, if it would tilt the prices in favor of the partner countries, we would expect that these prices go up, but we do not see that in the, in the data. Okay, so what I showed you so far, and as I said, it's, this is like ongoing and um, preliminary to some extent, I showed you at least some suggestive evidence that this tax haven presence of multinational firms has to some extent mildly declined over the last decade. Um, but what you see here in the graph, and this is again the zero tax reporting for at the beginning of the sample frame and at the end of the sample frame, and you see that this has not massively changed. So unfortunately, the scale is not like right. So this spike is actually smaller than this spike. So um, we are in remote, um, we have remote access to that data and I didn't manage to get this right. But, um, but you know, you still see it in the data. So it's not gone away. Yeah, so the problem has not uh, vanished. So our um, um, intermediary um, conclusion is P firms seem to adjust to some extent, but it didn't go away, the, the, the problem. And we want now to dig deeper into other profit shifting channels. And as I said, um, would also like to clean up the productivity and um, uh, market power measures from profit shifting effects in the medium run. Okay, thanks for listening. Thank you.